Queen comes to New Zealand. 12,000 miles from the motherland, she is home among her people. Presented by the Governor General, the Prime Minister and Mrs. Holland pay their respects. As the Queen talks with them, Auckland sees for the first time the understanding smile which won all hearts in Fiji and Tonga. After meeting members of the Cabinet, a surprise awaits the royal couple. On the quay nearby stands the Auckland Harbour Board's present for Prince Charles. The Queen has been invited to Auckland Town Hall for the city's civic reception. Here the Mayor will tell her the things every citizen would say personally, if only that were possible. She looks upon her people. Official Maori welcome delights the Queen, but she has duties ahead. Early on the list of her engagements, wherever she goes, are the sick and infirm, and it is to Auckland Hospital that she and the Duke now drive. Those too weak to line the streets will see their Queen. Even the cot cases can't be restrained. It is to the schoolroom in the Wallace Block that Mr. J. Grierson, chairman of the hospital board, first takes the Queen. Twelve-year-old Selwyn Granger's collection of seashells interests the Duke. Both are deeply impressed when told that out of the many hundreds of items displayed, all but four are the children's own work. And now, one of those chance encounters which means so much to Queen and people. Meeting Her Majesty face to face is a man who last Christmas spoke to her from halfway across the world. He is Lieutenant Colonel Volker, CBE DSO, who spoke from Korea in the Round the Commonwealth broadcast, and he hopes to be back there on duty soon. On to her next engagement. 16,000 children take the royal couple to their hearts in the Auckland domain. Let the great gathering speak for itself. Her Majesty's New Zealand ship Philomel at Devonport is the setting for the presentation of the Queen's colour to the Royal New Zealand Navy. Escorted by Captain M. L. Hardy, naval officer in charge, and attended by Commodore Madden, the royal couple approach for the ceremony. First, the old colour, presented in 1937 by Lord Galway, will be slowly paraded. Then the new Queen's colour will be consecrated. The ceremony starts with the royal inspection.
old color passes and gives way to the new. In the face of Jesus Christ, we dedicate this queen's color to the glory of God and to represent unto us on fitting occasion the presence and authority of our gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Her Majesty presents the new Queen's color to Lieutenant J.I. Quinn, RNZN, leader of the color party. It is a solemn moment. And now the Queen speaks to her seamen. I am very glad that I am able to present a new colour to my Royal New Zealand Navy so soon after my arrival. And I am very proud of the parade which I see here today. I congratulate all ranks on their smart turnout and drill. The sea and the navy have been of lasting importance to New Zealand, as they have to the United Kingdom. Their ears still ringing with naval cheers, the royal couple return to Government House. Tomorrow is Christmas Day. and her husband were told about Uncle Tom Garland and his children's choir. But Santa Claus and the presents he brings from the women of New Zealand are a genuine surprise. They are quite definitely not on the official program. The fresh young voices have made the morning beautiful. The royal couple leave for historic St. Mary's, knowing they can always think of New Zealand as home. Received by the Bishop of Auckland, the Queen and the Duke join their fellow worshippers. They are in the midst of their people as they walk to the house of God. 